Hello, my name is Eric Fahmed, and today I will be discussing the genetic disorder commonly known as Down syndrome. So let's get right into it. So what is Down syndrome? Well, the first thing that we have to um, recognize is that every human being has a nucleus. And the nucleus is where um, genetic material is stored in genes. And genes carry these traits through, um, they're grouped in chromosomes, which are, uh, they're like raw-like structures, and they start where the chromosomes are. So a normal human being will have to, uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes. Well, when someone, when someone is Down syndrome, they have an extra or partial uh, copy of the chromosome 23. So the reason why why it is also um, known as trisomy 21 is because um, in normal human being, there's two, it's a pair. But when someone's Down syndrome, there's gonna be three. So uh, tri means three, so that extra copy or partial extra copy, and it's on the 21st chromosome. So trisomy 21, is also another name uh, for Down syndrome. So uh, also some, I wanna get into some physical traits of uh, a individual that has Down syndrome. So the extra copy on the chromosome 21 will um, have kind of a negative effect on someone. Um, you're gonna have um, a low muscle tone because it's not letting the individual develop fully. You're gonna have a small structure uh, and usually if you see someone with Down syndrome, they're usually kind of uh, short. They're not tall. They're not they're not big. They have a small structure. Uh, you could their their muscle um, is low. But one certain thing is that they have a upward slant on their eyes, and uh, that's something really common with individuals with Down syndrome. And you can usually you usually see it um, on individuals that have it. But every person with the disease has their different characteristics. They're not all the same. Most of the time you can tell when someone is Down syndrome, but um, they all have their own um, different characteristics. They're all unique in their own way. Um, they're not, a lot of people um, might think like, oh, they're all the same. They all have the same um, disorder, like everything's the same, but it's not true. They all have their own characteristic and uh, they're all unique in their own way. So the next thing that I want to talk about is the mental traits. And so what happens with the mental traits is that in the physical traits, they're not fully developed physically, their muscle, their structure, but mentally also, um, they usually have an IQ of about from 10 to 30, which is quite low, um, very low actually. And they have intellectual disability. So if you see someone with Down syndrome that's 40 years old, which is um, a pr pretty old, a, a good age for someone with Down syndrome, is that they have the mind of an eight-year-old. So their mind doesn't develop fully. Um, and with that being said, they they have speech difficulty most of the time because they they can't con um, they can't get the words out. They might not know the words what to say. Uh, a lot of them stutter. A lot of them also speak rapidly where you can't really understand them unless you you live with them or you've been with them for a long time so most of the time it's uh they have a, a speech difficulty their mind is is not the same age as them and uh one big thing is that they have a wide range of emotions so they could be very happy one day and then very sad the other and they just can't control it that's just the way they are but a big question about this disorder is how common is it? So one in every 700 babies um, are Down syndrome. So it's not that uncommon. And um, about 6,000 babies uh, are born with it every year here in the U.S. And in total, the total amount of people that have it here in the United States is 200,000. So it's not that uncommon. It's actually the most common chromosomal uh, disorder. So it's not that uncommon. It, it, it's pretty common. I mean, one in if you were talking about like one in um a hundred thousand babies, then okay, that's that's not that's not that um uh, common. That's not that the percentage isn't that great. But one in seven hundred is uh, pretty common. It's not it's not like um it's not that uh, low. 
So, um, the next thing I want to get into is the history of Down syndrome. So, you probably um, ask why is it called Down syndrome, um, where they even get the name. Because uh, if you were to think about it, trisomy 21 makes the most sense. Like, oh, it's an extra pair of the, uh, not an extra pair, but an extra copy of the chromosome. And it's on chromosome 21. So trisomy 21 is, I would think, would be the best name, right? But let me get into the history first, and then I'll explain why it's not just that one name and why it's commonly known as just Down syndrome. So um, uh, back then, like in the 1800s, uh, for many years, there was many scientists that um, had looked in, had slightly looked into it. Um, they never really said like, oh, this is a syndrome and kind of um, separated it from other um, disorders and illnesses and uh, diseases, stuff like that. Like they had never really gone in depth. They had never investigated until 1866 when a guy named John Langdon Down was the man who published a, a scholar book and explained this disorder and ex it separated it from other disorders and explained how it was its own um its own thing basically that it, it wasn't the same as as other things it had um the characteristics it had uh stuff like that like he, he kind of just um it was the beginning of of um figuring what this was and today he is known as the father of um of this syndrome but it wasn't until 1959 that down syndrome was known as a chromosomal condition so the father um john langdon down he just kind of um basically saw that it was different it wasn't it's it's it wasn't like something else it had its its own thing but it wasn't until years later that they knew it was a chromosomal condition and then it wasn't until four years later, so that's kind of a long time, four years later, um, in the year 2000, so not that long ago, that scientists identified 329 genes on chromosome 21. So by getting this information, they were going to be able to open the doors to great advances in understanding what this um, syndrome is, what the disorder is. Um, many questions that parents will probably ask, like, why does this happen? Um, they might be able to answer it now. It is going to take time, but um, with new technology, new advances, um, and finding these 329 genes, it's going to really open the doors to many new research, many new studies, new factors. But um, yeah, that that's the way that that's what happened. So another important topic is that, um, that I was going to get back to is that there's three different types of Down syndrome. So the first one I had kind of mentioned already, it's trisomy 21. Um, it's the most common one. There's 95% of, 95% uh, of the cases are trisomy 21. That just means that there's an extra copy of chromosome 21 on chromosome 21. So that's the most common one. That's the one um, that most individuals have. The next is mosaicism. Mosaicism. Um, I always have trouble pronouncing it, I'm sorry. But it's 1% uh, of cases. And this is where it can either be a partial copy or a full copy. So they have uh, fewer characteristics than someone that has trisomy 21 because they can have that partial and they won't get all the characteristics, but they are still Down syndrome. But it's just, in a way, it's less because um, they're just getting partially. But you can't generalize it because... Um, they're not all the same like they they vary um greatly even though it's just one percent of cases they still vary with all the characteristics that they possess the last one is called translocation so four percent of cases um are translocation and this one is totally different from the other two that i just that i just mentioned because this one can be a full or partial copy of chromosome 21 but it is attached to a different chromosome and it's usually chromosome 14 but um it's totally different because it is a copy and it can be partial or full but it's not attached to chromosome 21 it's attached to another chromosome and this is why it makes it um totally different and it's um the second most common even though it's four percent it's a low percentage but it's the second most common one and that is why because it's attached to a different chromosome so another question, I mean, another um, 
Yeah, another question is that what causes Down syndrome? And simply put, we don't know the answer. Scientists still don't have a firm answer as to why your child is Down syndrome. There are factors like the maternal age, which is if a female is older than 35 years old, that she has a way higher chance of having a baby that is Down syndrome. But recently, and this was kind of surprising to me, um, because um, they had just taught they taught me this uh, this semester in my lecture class. Um, I remember seeing that if a mother is older than thirty five, their baby can has a way higher chance of um, having a baby with Down syndrome. But there's recent research, and this is due because of high birth rates that show eighty percent of children um, that were born with a mom that is younger than 35 had um, Down syndrome. So let me kind of re-say that because that might be confusing, but um, high birth rates show that 80% of children with Down syndrome are born to women under 35. So that's kind of a better um, phrase. Um, so that would just make the trend backwards because that's kind of saying that like um, the age isn't really a, a big factor because 80% of the children were down uh, that were down syndrome um the mothers were under 35 so it's kind of like the trends going backwards but I just thought that was really surprising um it, yeah it just really surprised me and I was just like wow I had no idea I had never read that until now and um yeah it was it was pretty cool that, that I had found that so um there also is no research to prove that there's environmental factors that go into this and um, the, the extra chromosome can be from both parents, but it, in all the cases, only 5% can be traced back to the father. So that means that it's most of the, most of the time it's the mom that gives the chromosome to the, to the child. And also if they have a child, if uh, parents have a child that's down syndrome, their second child has a one in a hundred chance of being down syndrome as well. So I would think that they would take into consideration, like there is kind of a high chance. It's not like one in a million, how I said, one in a hundred thousand. So yeah. Um, how is uh, Down syndrome diagnosed? There's two ways. There's one at birth and there's one, um, there's one at birth by the physical characteristics, the low muscle tone, uh, they can do tests. And there's one when the female is pregnant and that's doing sonograms and blood tests. And they can determine if the, the chance of the child being Down syndrome. So those are the two ways. It's usually by birth because it's so hard by doing just blood tests and sonograms to see it unless it's like super obvious. And most of the time it's not. So most of the time it is at birth when Down syndrome is diagnosed. And um, lastly, the life expectancy of someone with Down syndrome is 60 years old. And uh, but um, research has shown that most of the time they don't make it to age 60 even though that's the average because they have a high risk of getting so many um different things they have a high risk of heart disease obesity is a very big one with people with down syndrome and immune disorders so these factors um make their life expectancy life expectancy shorter but um the average is 60 the life expectancy and one quick little thing um personal that why i chose to discuss down syndrome is because my neighbor, um, he passed away a couple of years ago, but he was actually Down syndrome. And we were very close to him. And you just learn so much about them. I mean, you just learn how uh, how they are, how they think, just so many different things. And he, he couldn't um, control his speech that well, but it was, um, uh, he, he would stutter, he would do stuff like that. But you do learn about them. And I had a friend um, very quick, I worked uh, uh, in the, during the summer as a lifeguard and had a friend who her, who her uncle was Down syndrome and he was totally different. He could talk perfectly. He was so aware of everything and that just shows how they're not all the same. They all have their own characteristics and they're all different in a way. And lastly, I just wanted to thank you. Thank you for this great semester. I truly learned a lot in the lab. I know it was short, but I learned more in the lab than in my lecture and that is a fact. But um, I just want to say thank you and I hope all is well and stay safe. Thank you.